Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 2, lesson number 5, on how we multiply fractions by whole numbers. And again, I know that you've been doing this probably, you know, maybe just in 5th grade, but maybe you did it a little bit in 4th grade. But in 6th grade, we're old enough now that we can really start to understand why what we do actually works. So, let's jump in to the first exercise where we understand why multiplying a fraction by a whole number works out the way it does. Let's get into that right from the beginning. Here we go. Exercise number one. Emily is working with five boards that are all three-fourths of a foot long. The image below shows a representation of the boards Emily has, shown as the shaded portions represent the total length, in letter A, of the five boards as a product. All right, well, again, just to make sure that you understand it, because the picture can be a little bit confusing, right? Each one of these things represents a one foot long board, but she's got five of them that are just three fourths of a foot long. So this is what she's got. She's really got the shaded portions. So let's be very clear, right? We want to represent the total length of the five boards she has. Well, she's got five of them, right? And each one of them is three-fourths of a foot long. Now, we're not going to figure out what that is equal to yet, but let's just be very clear. At its most basic element, that's what multiplication is. I've got three-fourths plus three-fourths plus three-fourths plus three-fourths plus three-fourths, so I have five times three-fourths. Now, letter B, Based on the shaded portion, not letter uh, based on letter A, but just based on the shaded portion, what must the product in A be equal to? I'd like you to leave this as an improper fraction. So just take a look at this shaded portion and tell me how many fourths I have. Go ahead and do that. Well, I mean, let's just count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I have 15 fourths, right? That's what I have, all right? And we're gonna just leave it as a, that improper fraction. We, we can convert it to a, a, a mixed number in a little bit. But we really wanna understand now why this product is equal to 15 fourths, and again, it should be relatively self-evident, right? I've got five of these three-fourths, right? Now, letter C says, given that three-fourths simply is three times one-fourth, justify our answer in B based on regrouping the multiplication from A. In other words, this. We know that what she has is five times three-fourths, but three-fourths itself is three times one fourth. Now multiplication has this fantastic, fantastic property called the associative property, meaning that we can do the five times three first, and that gives us 15, and then 15 times one fourth is simply by definition 15 fourths. Wow, that was a terrible circling job, right? But it should just make sense. If I've got five of three of something, then I have 15 of that something. What is the something? The something in this case is fourths, right? And if I have five of three of them, then I have 15 of them, specifically 15 fourths. Let's keep going on this, right? Exercise number two, nice applied problem. Mark is making a cookie recipe that calls for three quarters of a cup of sugar. He triples the recipe. Write a product to represent the amount of sugar Mark will need. Evaluate the product and write your final answer as a mixed number. All right, I'd like you to pause the video right now and see if you can find the answer to this problem. All right, well, when we triple something, it means that we multiply it by three or we have three of them. So what we have is we've got three times three fourths. Now, just like before, if I have three of three of something, then I have nine of those things, right? 
So I now must have 9 fourths. And what is 9 fourths? Well, as a mixed number, 4 goes into 9 two times, leaving me with a remainder of 1. So we need 2 and 1 quarter cup of sugar. Now at the end of the day, what a lot of people end up learning is that when I have a fraction that I multiply by a whole number, I multiply the whole number by the numerator. And that makes a lot of sense, because remember, the numerator is literally the number of things I'm taking, right? The denominator, that just represents how many I've cut the whole up into. So I took a whole and I cut it up into four slices, and I took three of them. But now I have three of those three slices, which gives me nine of the slices. How big are the slices? They're each one-fourth of uh, whatever, one-fourth of a cup big, so I have nine-fourths. Yes, you do the whole number times the numerator, right? Because the numerator tells you how many pieces you have. Multiply the, those new, that whole number by the numerator. Let's keep working with this in some just straight up problems, right? Again, this one, letter A, well actually, let's, let's read exercise three, then we'll kinda, kinda get into the work. Find each of the following products. Write your answers in simplest form and as a mixed number if necessary. Now letter A is the most basic of them all. Eight times one fourth is literally, since it's eight one fourths, it is eight fourths. Keep in mind, of course, that 8 fourths, as we've already looked at, is 8 divided by 4. So 8 times 1 fourth is 2. And again, you should be able to picture that. If I had one, 8 1 fourths, well, 4 1 fourths would be 1. So 8 1 fourths would be 2. All right, letter B. I've got 5 times 2 thirds. Again, that's easy. If I have 5 of 2 of anything, I have 10 of those things those things happen to be thirds. So I get 10 thirds, written as a mixed number. Three goes into 10 three times. I have a remainder of one, so I have three and one third. Okay, let's do a little bit more together and then we'll have you do some on your own. Eight times five sixths. Again, if I have eight of anything, eight of five of anything, I have 40 of those things. In this case, I have 40 sixths. Now to simplify this one, I may want to first divide the numerator and the denominator by two, just to make the simplification easier. That would give me 20 thirds. Now I can say, well, 20 thirds is 20 divided by three, which is six, and that leaves me with a remainder of two thirds left over. One more together. 15 times two fifths would have to be 30 fifths. 30 fifths is the same as 30 divided by five, and that's a nice whole number, just equal to six, all right? So what I'd like you to do is tackle letters E, F, G, and H on your own, and then we'll go through them all. All right, let's go through them. So in letter A, right, we've got seven of five halves, right? So anytime we have seven of five of something, that means we've got 35, right? 35 halves. Now I need to simplify that, so maybe I'm gonna go over here and do 35 divided by two, right? One, five, subtract, seven, 14, subtract, remainder of one, so 35 halves is 17 and one half, all right? Now these, Letter F, maybe this gets a little bit more complicated because I have 15 of 8 fifths, right? So I have to actually think about what 15 times 8 is, right? And that gives me 120, right? So 15 times 8 fifths is going to be 120 fifths. Now I have to simplify that, but keep in mind 120 fifths is 120 divided by 5. So I come down here, I do a little 120 divided by five, two, 10, subtract 20, I get 24. So 120 fifths is just the whole number 24. Ah, 25 times three sevenths. Well, that's easy enough. 25 times three is 75. Whoops, 75 sevenths. And I can easily do this. Seven goes into 75 10 times, 
right? But then there's a remainder of five left over, so I have 10 and five sevenths. I'm having a little problem with my pen right now. All right, and finally, 16 times 9 fourths. Well, again, I might have to think about what 16 times 9 is, so maybe on my side of my paper, I figure that out. It's 144, so I get 144 fourths. Again, I want to think about what that is, so I use my division to help me. 144 divided by 4, 4 goes into 14 three times. 12 subtract gives me 24, and 4 goes into 24 six times, so 144 fourths is just 36. All right, so great. You know, again, at the end of the day, yes, you know, we're basically taking the whole number and just multiplying it by the numerator, but I hope you understand why. All right, let's move on to one last problem that's a nice applied version of this. Here we go, exercise number four. A rectangle has a width of eight meters and a length of 11 and three quarters meters as shown. Letter A, Justine believes she can find the area by using the calculation 88 plus eight times three fourths. Explain why Justine is correct. What important property is Justine using? All right, it's a bit tricky, but I'd like you to pause the video right now and think about why Justine is correct that this calculation, 88 plus eight times three fourths, would give us the area of this rectangle. Take a little bit. All right, let's get back to it. So, what we should know is that area is simply length times width, right? So ultimately speaking, right, what Justine knows is that we can find the area by doing 11 times, sorry, eight times 11 and three quarters. But what is 11 and three quarters? 11 and three quarters is 11 plus three quarters. So Justine can now use an amazing property called the distributive property to multiply both the number 11 and the number 3 fourths by 8. Right now, of course, 8 times 11, that's easy. That's 88. And then we've got also 8 times 3 quarters. We don't know what the area is yet, but we know we can use the distributive property to multiply both the whole number portion of the length, which is 11 times 8, giving us 88, and then the fractional portion, 3 quarters times 8. Let's now finish this problem off. In letter B, find the area of the rectangle, use appropriate units. So you've now got to simplify this calculation. Pause the video now and figure out what the area of the rectangle is. All right, well, we already know it's 88 plus this mess. It's really all about figuring out what that mess is equal to. Now, we don't want to lose the 88, certainly not, but we do want to figure out what this is kind of all on its own, right? Well, we know 8 times 3 of anything is going to be 24 of those things, but 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6. So ultimately, we've got 88 plus 6, which ends up being 94 square meters. Remember, area is always squared units, square inches, square feet, square meters, square yards, what have you. In this case, because both of them were meters, it literally means that within this rectangle, we could fit 94 squares that are a meter by a meter. All right, let's wrap this up. Now, ultimately speaking, right, what we learned today was that if we had a fraction that we were multiplying by a whole number, we can find the result of that by multiplying the numerator of the fraction by the whole number and keeping the denominator as it is. And again, that should sort of make sense. If I've got two buckets and each one of them have three oranges in them, then I have two times three or six oranges. If I have two times three fourths, well then I have six fourths because I have two of three of something, I've got six of those things. In this case, we're not talking about oranges, we're talking about fourths, all right? So hopefully 
why what we do makes sense to you. We're going to be using it in the future, but for now, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.